seems almost presumptuous to apologise for my protracted absence. I don't presume to have been particularly missed by anyone, but I am sorry that it's been so long without a verbose, acerbic rant on some topic or other. I hope you'll forgive my negligence, and thank you to everyone who subscribed whilst I wasn't putting out any new material. I hope you'll enjoy this and future videos. Now, I've wanted to make this video for some time, as it addresses a fundamental flaw in the sorts of ideologies I like to attack. I wish to show you why all religious conceptions of morality and scientific or mathematical origins are flawed from the start, and where morality, ethics, mathematics, and science actually come from. The problem is, theists are so stuck in a mindset of obedience that they think these things are like legal requirements that have to be obeyed. Nothing could be further from the truth. Let's take science first. A common Christian argument is that God had to have set up the scientific laws of the universe for our convenience, like a macroeconomic modelist would select parameters for his model in order to get good results. However, this relies on a profound misconception about what a scientific law is. It's not that an object with mass is compelled by Newton's law to be attracted to other objects with mass. Newton's law merely describes this process. This is an absolutely crucial distinction. Newton's law is perhaps a particularly illustrative example, because Newtonian mechanics is a good way of describing medium-sized physical systems without high velocities, but Newton's so-called law breaks down at relativistic speeds where really large masses are involved, and it's revealed for what it really is. Not a law, a description. This distinction is hugely important. It removes at once the need for a sort of originator of laws, because the laws of science are not laws at all. They are merely consistent and accurate descriptions of how things behave. The same is even true of mathematics. Numbers do not exist in any meaningful sense. They are merely descriptive constructs. So-called laws that describe how they behave are just descriptors, very good descriptors, but descriptors nonetheless. Mathematics is a language that describes reality, but it is nothing more. It doesn't order numbers to do certain things. It merely describes how they operate. And the same is true of moral laws. There are no successful societies, either human or animal, that consistently have their members kill each other. It is a widely observed fact that animals do not kill members of their own species, except, in particular, and exceptional circumstances. Because we are sentient, we create a mental abstraction of this principle to satisfy our desire for an explanation for it, turning it into a social law against murder, but it is still, at its roots, derived from a description of how individuals and societies behave. Morality is a far more useful concept as a description than as a prescription. Reality is too complex to have an exhaustive prescriptive moral code that will maximise the social benefit or utility or whatever you want to call it of any realistic social system. However, describing how people behave within that system can be highly insightful. The important point here is that theists have their ideas about the origins of universal laws the wrong way round. They assume they're God, and in their primitive and thoughtless philosophy they assume that laws that are merely contrived and arbitrary descriptors selected on the basis of their utility have to be God-given too. But it is so very simple to see, to anybody who takes time to look, that physical laws are just a map of reality, mathematics is just a map of numbers, and morality is just an abstraction of evolved behaviours. There's no need for a God in any of this, and to examine the universe using accurate descriptions as scientists do, rather than fallacious prescriptions as theists do, is a superior method. Where scientists ask how things work, theists know the universe behaves according to the rules in their books or in their heads. They aren't interested in how people think, they want to tell people how to think. Their philosophy is the enemy of free inquiry on every level. The sad thing about this video is that only those who have thrown off that particular way of thinking are likely to accept these points. It makes a completely different way of looking at things to understand the universe the way I do, and I hope many of you do. This sort of reasoning won't change entrenched minds, but it will hopefully appeal to free ones. In proposing this rather intractable problem of how differently and fallaciously theists think, I cannot as yet pose a workable solution.